Islam without a doubt, there is this extreme stress on the importance of giving. Like we find in every religion and perhaps every culture. This concept of charity or this concept of giving is something that every human being, regardless of culture and regardless of region and regardless, uh, regardless of language, know and understand. And it is a concept which is perhaps a concept that is sacred, meaning that the human beings in make nature inclined to understand or recognize the importance of giving. I have recently overcome a study which stated perhaps in one of the magazines of America, which stated that actually when a psychologist comes to study an individual who gives, or the, the receptacles of a gift, obviously he becomes happy. If someone, for instance, today came and presents for you a gift of some chocolates, for instance, every one of us would be happy by the fact that we just received this particular gift. But this particular study states that actually the one who does the giving becomes more happy long term in his life than the one who is passed to the other separation. Perhaps this is the reason why the human being often inclines toward giving. And often inclines toward loving people who give. Those individuals who are generous in the community, those individuals who are known to be extremely charitable in history, often are deemed as legends for centuries or decades. For instance, we see that the entire universe, if they were to learn about the story of Isa, the body of Jesus, out of the Quran, everyone would love this particular individual. Because it was Isa and his father who would go toward his disciples, according to that nation that I state, that he would go and seek the Jews to wash their feet. They would go to him and they would just say, Oh, our master Isa, you should not be washing our feet, you should be washing yours, you're our master. He said, in this way of giving you this, in the way of me performing this particular action, I'm humbling myself in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm also humble in you, but you must reflect upon this particular act, this particular notion of the audacity of Isa and Islam. You see that these individuals, the individual is actually inclined to and derive 
people to die or, 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 or desire to kill, to die to save. Doesn't. Similarly, when we speak about the character of a man like Robert Fogg in Abbas, I mean, it's not to us. The human being actually loves this man. Every man, every woman, every child, everyone who knows Abbas, they love him. Separates them from the rest of humanity and his desire to give. And the fact that he wasn't able to give what he desired to give, it broke his heart. And for that, all of humanity, all of the world, the 340 followers of the episode, and everyone who has been exposed to the story of Adam Sudden and Abbas, is deeply What does the mind do? The mind is the Lord of that creation. And the fact that he was unable to. Back to the camp of the family of Zayn, Ali Saraj, and Saran, the fact that it hurt his heart, the fact that he was wishing to go back to the children of the family of Zayn, Ali Saraj, and Saran, made every one of our hearts weak for Ali Saraj. Because his desire to live, his desire to be charitable, his desire to be selfless, is that which separates Ali Saraj and Abbas, Ali Saraj, and Saran from all of the other companions. And that separates him from all of the other companions of the Quran from the end of the days of the Prophet is the Prophet is a unique individual. And for today's discussion, very briefly before we get into the tragedy of our master, Allah, I thought that we should take a brief look into the life of this personality and see where we can derive certain. Imam Ali al Ahmadiyyah Ali Sarati al Salam marries Umm al Jalil Ali al Sarati al Salam several years after the passing of Sayyid al Salam. Many people they believe that Umm al Jalil was the first wife of Sayyid al Salam after the passing of Sayyid al Salam. But rather, we find that the Jews. Others prior to that of Umm al-Jalil, amongst them, for instance, a lady by the name of Asma bin Ali. Anyhow, we come and we see that Imam Ali Ali Salam, he goes toward his brother Abu, and he says, Oh Abu, I want you to find me a brave man who comes from a courageous and who comes from a brave family so that I can propose to her for marriage. And the question came. that we desire to get married. This is not necessarily the very first action or the first characteristic that's going to come to our mind. Most of we want to marry a woman who's attractive. We want to marry a woman who's smart. We want to marry a woman who is rich. I don't know, right? We come with all of these other characteristics, and oftentimes it's not courage or bravery. In fact, if someone told you that this lady comes from a courageous and brave family, oftentimes you would you know, might be able to get afraid and say, I don't know if I want it. Go ahead with it. But I mean, I mean, I just want to ask you, he desires these particular characteristics. When Abir asks him, he says, I want you to marry me. And why do you desire a lady who comes from this kind of family? He says, because I want to be able to bless you and bless you on your children. It is said that Abir says, no problem. I will go and I will do research and I will get back to you. So just to open up a quick parenthesis on this. Many people, they come and they ask the question, Abir al-Muqmineen is Abir al-Muqmineen. Why does he need to ask Abir for advice in terms of who you should marry? Does that mean you can choose whoever you want? Because you already know Abir and then he has the type of knowledge? Well, absolutely you don't. But perhaps the way that the Nabi Ali Salaam is Salaam is trying to demonstrate to work as followers that there's no harm in seeking advice from others. And the fact that Abir was an individual who was knowledgeable in genealogy and family and so on and so forth, then you should go and ask him to speak for him in order that he's able to fulfill in, in order that he's able to fulfill his task in the community. And sometimes when we desire to get married, be it a man, be it a woman, it's okay to also ask for advice. Don't think that you know it all. Sometimes you can go to a man expert, you can go to the elders of the community, go to your parents, go to the other and so on and so forth, in order to make this determination. Anyhow, after your goals. After a couple of days, he comes back to where the Prophet Ali Ali Salaam, and he says, Oh, Abu, I want you to marry me. And he says, 
whenever I would see my master and my Messiah in the state of Ra, I would see him sitting on the ground, raising his hands to the Ra, the Ra, the Ra, and this is an indictment of someone who is sitting down in the ground. So what is the Ra? He sees our Ra, the Ra, the Ra, the Ra, and he says, yes, I shall be there, but he will be the first disciple of the Prophet. And what can we expect from someone who is the son of Amir al Muslimin? In order to understand this particular attribute of having trouble with our God, when Allah said, I say, Allah, I want you to have trouble with the Sidira, we have an individual who has deep insight. We need to understand the insight of that. So, what happens? On that day of the battle of Hadza, he said that Amir al Muslimin, Ali was Karan to us, after finally receiving the permission. From the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to go out and fight Amr bin Abdul with al Amri, he goes out and he begins that battle. We don't know the story. But it's said that Amir al Mu'mineen alayhi wa sallam against Amr bin Abdul with al Amri, and Amir al Mu'mineen is great, that no battle was as difficult as that time. But it's said that they began the war, and they began that particular fight. And it's said that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa the Muslims they were watching from, one side. And the enemies were watching from the other side. And so they were unable to see anything. Because Amir al Muslimin and Amr bin Abdullah al Amr were in the middle of the desert and the sand had overturned them. The only thing that they could see is the electricity, the shock striking from the two sides. But it's said after Rasulullah, after the Muslims, after the, the followers of Amir al Muslimin, they're looking and they're watching the battle take place. All of a sudden, after some time, he sees the dust that settles, and Amr al Mu'minin is sitting on the chest of Amr bin Abi Wudin. He said to have this moment, and when Ali Ali Sarati was around, had the word of Allah, he was right. He's about to remove Amr bin Abi Wudin Amr and send him towards the fires of hell. And he's about to bring that sword down. And he's about to strike it. And he's about to send this individual to exactly where he belongs. He's bringing the sword down. The enemy drops the sword. He stands up. He steps around the point of fire. Then he goes back to the point of fire. So he begins to walk back to where the tent is from. They begin when they come to where the tent is from. What are they going to look at this thing? And they say, oh, that's the water. God forbid he got up, and then he killed Imam Ali. Why did Imam Ali make this mistake? Why did he give him another chance? And the Prophet said, I am Ali. And it's like that at this moment, when Ali is in the tent, and he's out of the way of the tent, he comes to where Ali is, and he says, Oh, Ali, I'm Ali. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to have to do it. According to the Arabic legend, has the strength of a thousand men. He's an individual who, according to the stories or according to the metaphors, it's as if he would wrestle lying with his eyes. Why did you give him a chance? You could have struck him and sent him to where he belongs, but you stopped. Why? And it's time for Ali to say, I'm sorry, oh great Allah. And he jumps up out of the back of the car. And as that's about to be done, that sword of his turn, and I turn it into a picture face. And my anger transformed into my anger at the end of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while you are here, I took the other side and he killed my child with the hand of his son. And he was mean after Sarah was around at this moment. What separated Amr from the Ta'ala, Amr from Sarah was Sarah, from everyone else, is that it was that internal battle that he saw. Fact that every step and every breath and every movement that he made was solely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make that sure. And the thing that drove him was his love of Ali Abdullah and Hussein and his Sahabi. So the Prophet of Allah said, Secondly, it is said in Aisha. And the second quality that Abu Sabah bin Abbas, Ali Sarati was Sarati, had is the fact that he was an individual who excelled in everything. He was an 
leave us alone for one day. Send someone else instead of you. Otherwise, you will be to all of us. Clearly, I believe the Hadith of Sarah is about such time. Today, I will give you a new one. It is something that he goes back to where he's coming. He removes the armor. Then he calls out his husband and walks out of his house with Sarah. He brings him towards the middle of the town. He takes off his armor and he puts it on the house of the town. He takes off his helmet and he puts it on the face of the other of the Abbas. He gives him his sword. He puts them on his horse and he gives them to other of the Abbas. He goes and he begins to fight the army of Mahalia. As he's going, as he's piercing through the army of Mahalia, all of these individuals begin to stay calm. This is Ali again in the same way that he fought at Badr, and the same way that he fought at Ahad, and the same way that he fought at Khandah, and the same way that he fought at Khaybar, and the same way that he fought at Khadeh, and the same way that he's been destroying us the entire day. Ali ibn Abu Talib is a liar and he's a cheer. He promised he would no longer have a fight us anymore. It is said that at this moment, the Ali Ali Salatu was Salam, he comes out of the tent. They all see his face because he's not wearing any helmet. And then he begins to wonder, what just happened? Is there two Ali in the army of Ali? Doesn't make any sense. But it's not that he waves his hand back to the, the boy on the horse who comes back. He alights out of front of Abbas from the horse. He removes his helmet and they wonder, who is this boy with the beautiful face? And then Ali is not even Ali Salatu was Salam. At that moment, he introduces to the world the boy with the beautiful face, saying that this boy is Salam of the Hashim, my son Ali. Was the first time he exposed himself to a Muslim. And they remember that day in Hashem. When Abu Khalid and Abu Khalid and Abu Khalid when he comes back without a sword and when he's moving towards the Ukraine, one of them stormed to the right. That 4,000 people, 4,000 people. From the arms of Omar al Islam, who began to scatter right and left because they remembered what Ali Abdul Abbas did. Ali Abdul Abbas did. The human intellect cannot understand Ali Abdul Abbas. The human heart cannot compose the love of Ali Abdul Abbas. It cannot. It's a religion. It's an animal out of the This was a boss of the battle of Sikhi. Again, in order to understand the character of Abdul Qadir al Abbas, Ali Salatu was Salam, before we get toward our conclusion, we see that on the day of Ashura, Abdul Abbas recited some lines of poetry that again demonstrate exactly his character, exactly his loyalty, and his submission toward Imam al Hussein, Ali Salatu was Salam. It is said that at that moment, when Abu Salim al Abbas he reaches the river Euphrates, he picks up the water, he brings it closer toward his mouth, and then he throws it back onto the river, stating that there's no way to go into the lake to the sea. And many people listen to this title. But many people, they come and they state that Abu Salim al Abbas actually desired to do that. But when you read the words of Abu Salim al Abbas, there as to demonstrate to the world that this water of mine is no way for me to drink it, or to say to my children, but that's not what the Prophet of Allah said. He begins to recite the lines of poetry that has to be brought to the same Hussein, Wada'a Zahra, Kunti and Tafuni, Ad al Hussein, Shar al Mamuni, Wada Shrabin and Dar al Mahuni, Wallahu Hada Ma, but not in the end. He begins to talk to his son, he says to his son, who am I to drink this water when Hussein is there and he is not? And he mentioned Abu Khalid al Abbas al Salam, who has this quality of character and Hussein, who has this understanding, he has this insight, he has this aspect of loyalty, he has this aspect of submission toward his master Abi Abdullah and Hussein, Ali Salatu al Salam, and he begins, and, 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 and that which separates Abu Khalid al Abbas from the battlefield. The fact that he has won battle internally with his own hands. What does this mean? It is said that one day, for instance, one day when Imam Ali ibn Salim is with Ali ibn Salim in Kufa, it said that there's these two boys walking in the streets. As they're walking, 
being passed by the house of the man. I mean, I'm just kind of these two brothers. The elder brother looks toward the younger brother, or the elder friend looks toward the younger friend. And he says, Look, this is the house of the leader of the boy. This is the house of Ali Ali Khan. So the younger boy looks toward Ali Khan and says, This is the house of Ali Khan. The big boy is the head of the battle. The one who is the great, courageous, royal king. He says, Yes, this is the house of Ali Khan. As they're walking by, a significant Ali Ali Khan is sitting in the courtyard of his home. He's sitting outside and he's having a sort of breaking of his heart. He says, Oh, my God, I thought this guy was the husband of my life. He's just got that difficult look. It's something that I could give him some liquid before he was able to chew it. It is something that I'm going to have to start to respond, breaking this person's heart, and it's a demonstration of stubbornness. This says that the younger boy begins to feel bad for him. And he's got that trouble in his eyes. The one who's been open to him and kind and comforting him. Now, Ali Ali Salam is saying, Look at me, you don't have to do that. He put his sword against the head of my friend. He saw it in my eyes that he was open to the world. I didn't know that he was just like that. I thought that was just like the old people open to the world. How you doing? They did it. But I'm not so proud of him. Yet at this moment, our desire to live for the things of Christ is of course not. Of the young guys out of the Sarachi Quran, and the one that's been coming about the world, where he makes every single movement right for the last time in the Bible, in the way of Ali Abdullah, the same great Sarachi of the Quran, which makes him this individual of great courage and of great valor and love, great victory. Which is why when we come to the text of one of the poetry, the first thing that he directs and the first thing that he needs to converse with is that he's trying to win that battle of his home. When Jahab and Nasser stood beyond the next to him, that is the same. Furthermore, we come and we see that when Abu Sadiq Abbas and I ask you all, can you please recognize this particular point that I'm going to make? Yes, you can. It is said that when Abu Sadiq Abbas had his plan, imagine the moment, the day of Ashur, the family has passed away, the Hashim has passed away, Abu Sadiq Abbas has just had the right heart struck. What are the lines of poetry to recite at this moment? Wallahi in Qadatum Yameen, in Muha, in Muhammad, in Abedan Hamdeen, wa an Imam and Sahab al Yaqeen, Muslim Nabi al Zahir al Yaqeen. He goes and he says, By God, if you cut off my right hand, then surely I'm going to continue to defend my religion. In the defense of this Imam, the Imam who stood, the Imam who comes from this project, the pure project, who comes from that, trustworthy prophet, and so on, and so on. What is the unique nature of that these lines of poetry? Some of my state are not really much better than this, but what exactly are you talking about? What I'm trying to state is that in this moment, in these last moments of the life of Abu Sadr and Abbas, Abu Sadr and Abbas, after he's just had his right arm struck, after he is failing in bringing the water back toward the children, Abin Fadl and Abbas, Ali Sarachi was Quran, composes lines of poetry to praise Imam and to praise Ali Sarachi was Quran. Yet we have individuals full of ignorance and full of a lack of knowledge who will come and state there's no need for us to recite the Quran of Abin Fadl and Abbas, Ali Sarachi was in fact, they say, give us some intellectuals or come and recite something so that we can, you know, so on and so forth, all this type of this, this type of stuff. Abdul Fadl al Abbas, alayhi salatu wa salam, he wants perhaps his last word before he passes away to praise his master, Abu Abdullah al Hussein, and his son. This is something else. This is something else. This is something that demonstrates the greatness of the position. Of Abdul Fadl al Abbas, alayhi salatu wa salam, but at the same time, the greatness of the Imams of the Ahlul Bayt, which is why in the Ziyara of Abdul Fadl al Abbas, for those of you who have been to Karbala, you know that when you go to visit in the Karbala, when you go to visit Imam al Hussein, alayhi salatu wa salam, it has its own unique feel. But when you go to visit Abdul Fadl al Abbas, it has its own unique feel. In fact, we see that today, and it's the custom of many people, they state that we won't go and visit Imam al Hussein alayhi salam first until we go and we visit Abu Sadr al Abbas. Because Abu Sadr is the door for Imam al Hussein. 
Pakistan. I don't know if this is the right thing or the wrong thing. Whatever your heart takes you for, that's acceptable and that's perfectly fine. But in this yard of Abu Khabib Abbas, Abu Khabib when you stand in front of the West Tribe, those of you who are those of you who are going to take your heart safe at this moment, you look at the shot of Abu Khabib Abbas, Abu Khabib Abbas, ask you to cite the permission to enter, you look at it and you say, it's not how you are. I do how you have to do this. What you have to do with me, what hustle for you. Peace of mind. You say, peace be upon you, O virtuous servant. O virtuous servant. Before Andrew, before an Abbas being the son of Adam, before Abbas being the brother of Hassan al Hussein, before Abbas being the son of Muhammad, before Abbas being the son of Muhammad, the first action of the Christian Roman is not to be the virtuous But whatever Imam al Hussein al Salatu was settled in a particular town or was settled in a particular city, he would invite the people of that city to come toward its way and go on this journey toward Mecca. It is said that on that day when they reached Mecca before they left, when they changed their name of the Umrah, Umrah, and Muslim, and left Mecca to make the journey toward Kabbara. The sense of Imam al Hussein al Salam is to stand in the holy precinct of the holy Kaaba, and he invites people to come to him. When he sees that the reluctance of people who fail to come to the path of Imam al Hussein al Salam is because they felt that they didn't want to get involved in what they considered to be a political dispute, and the Prophet of Abbas al Salam to the Salam to go and stand near the holy Kaaba and he recites the sense. And he says, I begin in the name of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of his house. O believers, come toward the path of the saints. For you go and you try to perform your Quran and ask the Holy Kaaba, and the Kaaba comes toward the saints. You go to kiss and touch the Hajar al Aswad when the Hajar al Aswad comes to kiss the saints. O people of Mecca, today you are here to perform the Kaaba. That they could perform the Kawabra and the Holy Kaaba and to perform the pilgrimage, know that this house has no value for the fact that my father I am the Holy Kaaba. But we now know that I am the Holy Kaaba. I am the Holy Kaaba. He went to the Kaaba and removed it from his idols and so on and so forth, inviting them with his powerful words to come. And we find that Abu Khabib Abbas, Abu Salaam, Abu Salaam, who continued this tradition, included this Kaaba. And even in Karbala, I would tell you that Abbas would try his very best to get people toward the path of the Imam Hussein al Islam. On that day of Ashura, it is said that on the morning of Ashura, before the battle began, Shimon bin Ben Joseph comes toward the middle of the battle. And he calls out, Aina ben Ozakir, where are the sons of my sister? Umar bin Ayn and Shimon bin Joshim, they come from the same tribe. And anyone who would come from that same tribe, they would state that this is my brother or this is my sister. But he said that at this moment, Abu Khabib Abbas realized that this call was for him, and he refused to respond. So he called again, Ayna, and he said, No. At this moment, the Imam of the same tribe is about to summon Allah to Allah to God. He goes toward Abu Khabib Abbas and says, Abu Khabib he says, Go and respond to it, and even to the voice of the Lord. He said about this moment, that the Prophet of Allah, Salaam was Salaam, he gets up and he goes. He along with his brothers, they go to the Lord, they go into the battle field. And the Prophet of Allah says, Go and do this part of the Lord. He says, Shemar Khaled, the Prophet of Allah, Salaam, the Prophet of Allah, for you and your brothers, I am giving you immunity on this day. 
on the one condition that you leave the top of the city by the town. At this moment, you know, I can say, I had a head of my boss, I had to have the first words that I heard from the church. And look at the way we've departed from the great and the great level. I don't know what I'm going to ask, but it's the And I said, I'm not going to lie, what I'm not. I'm not going to lie. May God's curse be upon you and upon your family. He's trying to grant us the unity when we've left the son of the daughter of the city of God. So I want to have a great answer. I just forget about this moment because I just forget about boss reciting these words in a very loud voice. He embarrassed him up and he turns around very angrily and he walks back towards us. On that day of Ashura, and the Southern Abbas, Ali Salaam, and Salaam, he was along with his three brothers, according to the narration, and of course, on the Southern Abbas, who was the eldest. Approximately 35 years old, or 34 years old, according to the historians, her youngest brother was a, a brother by the name of Jaffa, who was approximately 21 years old. His other brother was Abdullah, and of man, according to historians, or Ali. It is said that on the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein Ali was allowed to his ground after all of his companions had passed away on the day of Ashura, he no longer there. He went towards the town of Abu Khalid al Abbas, Ali was allowed to his ground, and one by one they covered the three brothers. Abu Khalid al Abbas told them to all go and spend the night in the same place. Because he wanted to make sure he wanted to watch over and see that they were all killed in the way that they asked for Imam to be done in fulfilling the covenant towards their father and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he was not in his feet until he was inside the place of the day of great tragedy. Before I get into the Messiah, let me just recite the Lord Jesus and one man who shall not speak to his son. It was once this Abba. In his dream, he sees and on top of a cloud that is just one of the Abba furniture. He sees him on top of a cloud that is really on the top of the city on the floor. And next to him on top of a cloud, there are papers scattered all around. He's taking one paper, reading it. He's kissing it, placing it on his forehead, and keeping it there again. Then he takes the other letter, and he keeps it in his lap. Then he would take another letter, and he kisses it, and he places it on his forehead, and keeps it in his lap. The scholar asks him, he says, what do you mean by the Lord has done that? I see you kissing some letters and keeping it to your right side, and I don't see you doing that in your face. What are you doing? Imam al Salam is silent. Now, the papers and the letters that I'm kissing and I'm putting it on my First of all, all of these letters are the letters of the Hajjah and the Mashriq. And those that were asked to write the Wasila of Abu Khalid al Abbas, Ali Salaam, Ali Salaam, I keep them in a special confidence in my spirit. And Abu Khalid al Abbas is not the head of the Mashriq. Why is Abu Khalid al Abbas not the Quran son of Abbas? Why is he the door of our desires? Some of the Alama is saying, well, perhaps. All of those individuals who desired to do something and bring their desire back towards something but were unable to do so, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them this title of Abu Khalid al Abbas. Because Abu Khalid al Abbas was unable to bring the water back for the children of Hussein, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, anyone who asks for the Abu Khalid al Abbas after that, they are not just in this idea. My brother has this for me. Tonight is a night of Dua, tonight is a night of Musida, but tonight is also a night of prayer. If you have a Dua, if you have something to do from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be it in this life, be it for the next life, anything that you need on this night, seek it while you're here in the Masjid of the Brother Muhammad al Abbas, Ali Salatu wa Salam, because I swear to God, He is the way for you to have your prayers answered. Seek the Lord. It is said that that poem, that, that, that poem, he comes and he recites, you've all heard the poem. He said that on the day of Ashura, Every, everyone was calling Ya Hussein. But on the day of Ashura, Zainab called out Ya Hussein. The children of Zainab called out Ya Hussein. The companions of Hussein, they called out Ya Hussein. The skies and the heavens, they called out Ya Hussein. But Al Hussein calls out on the day of Ashura, Ya Hussein. On that day of Ashura, Abu Khalid al Abbas, Ali Salam, Ali Salam, he 
comes to load in on this description. It comes to him several times. Perhaps after coming to load him several times and being refused every single time, he comes one final time. And he says, see, you need to load up. You need to load up. You give me permission to go out and try. At this moment, you know, I'm in a facility in the Adam Yisrael. He looks toward other part of the back box. He says, I want a boss. You are the caretaker of the Oh, I lost. You are the hope of Stephania. Oh, I lost. You are the one who everyone looks up to. Oh, I lost. You are the flag bearer today for my army. If you die, I don't have an army anymore. Do you know what I've been telling you? I've been to respond at this moment. He says, I want to have to die. There is no more. There is no more army. Everyone has died. Let me go out and fight. Let me go out and fight in your way, I want to have to know. Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he never wanted to let go. He never wanted to let Abu Abu Abbas go out and fight. I tell you this, my brothers and sisters, that Abu Abu Abbas, yes, he was that flag bearer. Yes, he was that individual who was courageous, but he would never desire to let down Imam al Hussein. One narration explains that when the flags and when all of the other properties of Imam al Hussein and his family and his caravan were sent back towards Damascus, the Alam, the flag was, was, was brought in front of Yabib ibn Muawiyah. As the flag was brought into Yabib ibn Muawiyah, he placed it in front of the family members, perhaps to mock them, perhaps to demonstrate some sort of arrogance. It is said that he began to inspect that flag that Abu Qabil Abbas used to hold. They said that the flag from the top of his pattern is ripped. And on every single area of that pole, it has scratches and has marks, except for one area. What area, what area was that? It was the area where Abu Nafadu Abbas was holding it firmly because he would never let it go, because he was the hope of Sakaina, and she was watching from that area when she was standing next to Zain and watching what was going to happen. That's what it said that Abu Nafadu Abbas said, I love Abdul Nah. There is no army. Let me go and fight today. At this moment, it is said that Abu Nafadu Abbas said, he doesn't know what to answer. But then he says, I have a father to have bath, and you hear the children crying, and I'll touch, and I'll touch, but the first of the heat of Karabara is killing them. Why don't you go out and bring some water for them? It is said that I've been coming in our bath, and I'm surrounded. He goes into the tent. He brings the water skin, the vessel of water. He climbs on top of the horse. He takes the flag. He sends his salutations upon the children. He sends his salutations upon Zainab. Telling them that this is the moment now where I come and bring you back some water. It is said that Abu Nafadu Abbas, Alayhi Salam, he goes with one spear on his right hand and the flag on his left hand. Those hands which after a couple of moments he would no longer have. It is said that he begins riding toward the river Euphrates. It is said that when he comes out, everyone begins to scatter. They say, This is the son of Ali, this is the son of Aida. If we let him come and fight us, we will all be the one of the historians writes that Amr ibn Sa'ad says, move away, because Amr Abbas can move the right side of the army toward the left, and he will make the left side of the army and overturn it toward the right. It is said that Abu Nafadu Abbas, Abu Nafadu he gets closer and closer until he reaches the river Euphrates. At this moment, he alights from the forest, he fills up the vessel of water, he picks up, he summon, he picks up some water in his hands, then he looks toward that water and calls, Ya Abu Nafadu Abbas, 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 Abu Nafadu how can I drink this water when the Hussein is about to drink death? It is said that he took the water and he threw it back on the Euphrates. He gets down to his heart. I've been a father of my last child around. He came out of the last child. He came out of the last child. We see the flag. It's coming closer to us. We found the flag. We see 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 the flag. We I'm <laughs> 